Celebrity football picks with Armin and Levac on 104.5 The Team. You're home for New York sports. And every Friday at 6 o'clock, we've been doing this all football season long. My record on the season is 41 and 24. <sighs> Levac's record, 34 and 36. And celebrities are 40 and 30. They're creeping up on me now. 41 and 29 is what my record is. And celebrities, 40 and 30. Getting closer to me. Thanks to Mark Kessischer going 5 and 0 one week. Can this week's celebrity go 5 and 0? ESPN Sports Center host, John Bouchergrass. What's up, Bucci? Boy, what level of celebrity am I? You're I like the, the D list. You're up there, man. You're you're. Up, I mean, we had Kessy. Who's been your best celebrity? Would you say this year? <sighs> probably Barry. Yeah, was it Barry? Barry Melrose, Mel- probably. Melrose. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I, I feel much better now. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're up there, man. And uh, you know, five. <laughs> if Kessy went five and zero, oh, you could definitely get something going here. At least get three or four. All right, I'll try. I'll I'll, I'll try to to uh, pick for the celebrities, for the right. honor of the celebrities and all the hard work that we do. That's exactly right. This tough, tough, tough job that we have of talking sports every day, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right, John Bucheros with us. Uh, Joe B filling in for Jeff Levac, and Levac gave Joe B his picks. So it's Levac's picks through Joe B. Boys, here we go. It'll go Joe, me, then Bucci. Uh, Joe Patriots at Jets. What's Levac got going on? Yeah, Levac's making the, I think, very simple choice going with the New England Patriots in this clear game. I am as well, even though uh, Rex Ryan and the Jets, you know, supposedly are going to try to fight hard to get this last one. I don't. They just don't have the talent to do it. Bucci, what do you think? Yeah, this is an easy one, obviously. Brady versus a division team this time of the year. Patriots trying to secure that home field, win two home games, get back to Arizona to the Super Bowl where they lost, of course, their chance at a perfect season against the Giants. Amen. Bills at Raiders, boys. Uh, ever the homer, Mr. Levac is ignoring the Bills' uh, best defense in the league and taking the Oakland Raiders in the upset. Yeah, he thinks that this game will be more difficult than next week's game against the Patriots. He called it a trap game. Call it whatever you want. Bills beat the Raiders in Oakland. Bucci? I'm taking the Raiders, too. Oh. Always tough to fly across the country and play football. Um, the, the game sandwiched between Packers and, and, uh, and Patriots can be a little tough. Raiders got a decent offense, uh, and I think they have some veterans who might be up for this game. So uh, I want to try to, you know, if, if I'm going to make progress with the celebrities, I, I got to take upsets. Otherwise, we're, we're just going to you're just going to cruise into the victory. So I'm going to take the Raiders. There you go. All right. Well, sounds good. I have no problem with cruising, but that's fine. Uh, Giants at Rams, Joe B. Uh, Levac is looking at OBJ. He's looking at uh, some of the things the Giants have done on offense recently, ignoring the fact that the Rams have only have only given up 12 points in the last three games, and he is taking the New York Giants to get this W. Yeah, Rams' defense is nasty, and at home, I'll take St. Louis in this one. Bucci? Uh, you know, I just like to let it all hang out. You know, I'm a free and easy guy, and uh, and I just I, I just I just believe that the that the uh, the Rams are going to step up on this one as well. All right, very nice. Colts at Cowboys, Joe B. I think Levac believes that the Cowboys really turned a corner last week when they gave up the 24 points to the Eagles and still fought back to the win when it looked like they were going to collapse again. He is taking the Cowboys to continue on and beat the Colts. Cowboys at home, that means it's going to be a really tough one for them. Still going to pick the <laughs> Cowboys over the Colts. I think they are, they're really clicking at this point in the season. John Butchergrass, what do you think? Not sure if DeMarco Murray is going to be much of a factor. Uh, the Cowboys have not been good at home this year for whatever reason. Under 500, they're perfect on the road. Love Andrew Luck in this situation, and it's a big game for the Colts. If they want to be a playoff factor, they're going to prove they're going to be a good team. And I think they're, I think they're going to approach this and prepare like a playoff game, and they're going to win. Oh, I like everything you said except for that final prediction part. Joe B. Falcons at Saints, what do you think? I have it on good authority that LeVac would rather not pick this game because he doesn't like anything in the NFC South, but uh, he thinks the Saints maybe figured some things out last week uh, and they get this win over the Falcons and go on to win the NFC South. Yeah, the Saints are going to go to the postseason with a crappy record and it's going to be due in part to this game. Bucci? That's a hard one, real hard one. Um, where's the game being played? In New Orleans. It is. Um, I want to. I'm going to take the Falcons. All right, all right. Hey, Bucci, what do you think about teams under 500 being in the postseason? Are we still? Are we okay with that? Yeah, obviously, it's, there's 
you know, it's, it's, it's tough because, you know, you, the, the point of the division is you play the same, you, know, you play each other twice, and, and so that's almost like a mini league within the entire league, and so I understand it's tough to put a provision in, okay, if the division winner is under 500, then we'll add a third wild card. Um, you could do that if you want to. I suppose it would be, in the essence, more fair. Um, but we've always been kind of based on divisions, and, and uh, I don't see that changing. But you could easily do that. If you're under 500, then we're going to add a, a, you know, a third wild card to a team that's over 500. You could do that. ESPN's John Butchergross with Armin in the back and the celebrity football picks. Joe B. in this week for Jeff LeVac. We're live at Save More Beverage in Clifton Park. Come see us. Drop your name in the bucket. Uh, giving away a trip to the Super Bowl. We will draw that live on the air at 645. You don't have to be present to win. Hey, Bucci, what's your prediction on Jim Harbaugh? Where's this guy going to end up? Yeah, that, that's a tough one. Um, obviously, Michigan's going to offer him you know, complete power because you know, when you're a college coach or the GM, you're the the director of player personnel, you're the head coach, you're everything. So, uh, you know, that, that kind of autonomy is nice. Um, I think he wants to succeed at the NFL, though, and, and win a Super Bowl is the, is the biggest thing in, in, in sports in our country now because football is the most popular game, and the NFL is the biggest form of football. So, obviously, that's the biggest uh, prize to win, and maybe he still wants to focus on that. I don't see why to go. He could go back to college for a short run, but Michigan is so far behind the eight ball maybe it wouldn't be enough. And so, in the end, one of those New York jobs is something he may be looking at, especially the Giants job, if it, indeed it becomes open because of the wide receiver position is so set. And he, offensively, he looks like he has some good weapons. Now it's just a matter of uh, building the rest of the team. Now, we, we're here in Giants country. We've been led to believe that you know 99.9% .9 chance Tom Coughlin's coming back. You're not so yeah. certain of that? Well, no, certainly, he, you know, they're, they're def certainly a stable organization. He's a man with lots of enthusiasm and uh, a guy that, you know, obviously has won twice in terms of or once they get in the playoffs, they do well. It's just getting there. Um, so, you know, that, that certainly could be the case. But if it does change, um, that obviously would be a very attractive job. And um, I would think Harbaugh, because of his recent success in the NFC, would be a guy that would be, you know, high on that list. Mushi, speaking of jobs in the New York area, we all kind of expect this is the end for Rex Ryan. The question yeah. really for the Jets is, is it the end for John Idzik? Do you think it is? Do you think it should be? Yeah, I think, I think they're going to clean house and start all over and try, and, and try to figure this out. And, and that, that's why Harbaugh could also end up there if he's given his pick as a GM as well. They can kind of consult with him on that as a way to get him to come there, someone he's comfortable working with. Maybe he's just uncomfortable working with anybody. But um, you know, they seem like they have a ways to go in terms of you know, the quarterback position. Do, do they want it? Are they going to draft a Mariota or Winston and kind of start over again and be two, three years away again? Or do they have, are they going to have that patience? Are they going to go a different route? They probably should. And then that might be harder to get someone like Harbaugh. So maybe that makes it less likely that he goes there. So, yeah, I, I think that's probably the best way to go. And um, and just, you know, whether it's a Chip Kelly situation, some guy that come in, change the whole culture and from the ground up and uh, work with a guy that can get him talent. ESPN's John Butchergross with Armin and LeVac on 104.5 The Team Live from Save More Beverage in Clifton Park. Joe B. in for LeVac today, which means we instantly have step up our hockey game here on 104.5 <laughs> The Team. So, Joe B., take some shots at Bucci, man. All right, so we got, Bucci, three teams obviously here in the New York area. The Islanders, the Rangers, and, and the Devils. We'll push the Devils aside for a second. Look at the Islanders and the Rangers. With Rick Nash playing this well, and just out of his mind, but the Islanders playing so well as a team, at the end of the year, who do you think we'll say is the best hockey team in New York? Whew. I, I think you'll probably still have the Rangers by a tick. Um, you know, certainly with Lundqvist in that, the defense has been really banged up. So once they get healthy with McDonough and Girardi and, and Stahl and Dan Boyle, that's a, that's a really good group, a stronger group than the Islanders, really, by a little bit. Um, uh, and then up front... It's tough. You know, John Tavares is the best player, um, certainly, probably on either team. If you had a draft, he would probably go before Nash. It'd be close. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, it, it, they're pretty, you know, pr pr pretty even teams when you think about it. But I would give the, 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 the Rangers just a slight edge, I think. Big story in hockey this week was the 20-round shootout between the Caps and the Panthers, and it kind of reignited that. Um, are shootouts good for the NHL? Should we do away with them? I'm on the side of 
They're fun. They're dramatic. The casual fan loves them. Let's keep them in. Let's not overcomplicate things. Where do you come down on, on the regular season shootout? Yeah, you know, I always have been in favor of the shootout back in when the, the, the lockout that hit in 2004 and, you know, we had the canceled year and we're looking to reboot the, uh, reboot the league. That was, you know, I was pushing hard for the shootout. And, uh, like you said, I think it's, I think it televises well. I think it's good for the casual fan in the regular season, especially now that they, there's no more fights. You know, fights were always good too because fights televised well because it was very simple to see two men going mm-hmm. at it. Now there's fewer fights. So it's harder for the casual fan maybe to connect. And also, it's, it's fans just don't get on their feet very much. I mean, it's one nothing, 2-1. to one. I mean, people go pay money, and, and they're not standing up and screaming like they do at a basketball game 40 to 50 times for, for shots to go in or dunks or something, football, all kinds of stuff. So we need to give the fans a reason to cheer. So I'm okay for uh, for the shoot. I'd always have been. And, um, and if they wanted to go to three-on-three three after five minutes of four-on-four four for a few minutes, that's fine, too. I'm, I'm okay with that. And um, and then maybe you would have fewer shootouts. But overall, uh, I think in the regular season, I think the shootout's been fine and it's harmless. And if it causes one team to make the playoffs, it's the eighth or ninth team anyway. It's not the the top four. ESPN's John Vucigross and Bucci. We're going to have a Saratoga Frozen Springs Classic Pond Hockey Tournament. The second year we're doing right. this, thanks to Labat Blue. It's on February 6th through the 8th. You can go to 1045theteam.com right now and click Saratoga Pond Hockey. Get in on the four-on-four round-robin style games. Booch, what is it about pond hockey, man, that you're so fond of? Because you're always on the retweets on Twitter at Vucigross. Yeah. Well, they televise really well, I mean, or, they, or they photograph really well, because obviously in the wintertime there's such great lighting with reflection off the ice or snow. So right. it's just, the, as, as every photographer knows, it's just the lighting's phenomenal during the wintertime. And so that's why the pictures just look great. And uh, But, you know, it, there's just a freedom about it being outside. I'm slightly claustrophobic. Um, and so I like wide open spaces. I, I like, I like, and so just the fact of being outside, fresh air, none of that Zamboni exhaust inside the rink, and uh, it's just just a real cool freedom of being outside, and, and the echo of the puck hitting sticks off the trees, and it's just it's just really fun, and, and it's it's really builds a it's kind of a community thing. It, it's being outdoors in the wintertime when so much many of us spend too much time indoors, so. It's just a cool little exercise to be out there wheeling around, and uh, that sounds like a great event. And um, it's you know, the outdoor hockey thing is really picking up. You know, you have to buy, you don't have to pay for ice time. Yeah, very true, man. Absolutely, John Butchergross of ESPN. Get him on Twitter at Butchergross's website, BucciOvertimeChallenge.com. And Bucci, as always, man, greatly appreciate your time, my brother. Peace out, Buyati.